Okay, it's a little weird today. So I'm sharing my room with Coach Miss Garza. We're gonna do the best we can. So we are graphing exponential functions. It really isn't that difficult. So you just need to remember how our rules for, for exponents work. So we have our example. We want to want to graph out y equals three to the x power. That sounds good. So let's start with some of our some of our easier parts here. So if we say when x is one, so y would equal three to the first power, and three to the first power is just it's just itself. So when x is one, uh, three to the x power is three, right? Uh, if we do three to the second power, well, three squared is just nine. So that's not too bad, okay? Then we get this slightly more interesting case. Uh, what about, what about three to the zero power? And we remember that anything raised to the zero power, anything at all, we're not happy with how this camera is set up right now. Uh, all right. <laughs> Anything raised to the zero power is always equal to one. Okay, no matter what the number is, if it's to the zero power, the answer is one. Okay. All right. Then we have our negative exponents. So what is three? Skin your line. What is three to the negative second power? And then you have to remember back earlier this year, what did we do with negative exponents? And we said that's always equal to, uh, if you took the reciprocal of that number, so instead of three over one, one over three, and then instead of negative two, we could flip that to its positive version. So three to the negative, second power is equivalent to one over three squared. And one over three squared is just one over nine. So <clears throat> three to the negative second, one ninth, okay? And then we can do the same thing for three to the negative third power. That's gonna be equal to one over three to the positive third power, which is then one over 27. 1, 27, okay? And as far as the problems you have to do, that's all you're gonna have to do, right? Some negatives, we gotta write it as a fraction. Some positives, we just have to take the exponent. But then on this example, just, I don't know, maybe they're testing me. So I'm gonna erase all this, I don't need to see. What is, what is three, oh, I'm gonna be so happy when I'm, back here, maybe I should. What is three to the negative one half power? Well, since it's a negative, I can rewrite this as one over three to the one half power, right? Same as before, even though it's a fraction, it's still negative. So I take the reciprocal and then take the opposite uh, exponent. And then if we remember when we did radicals, the one half power is equivalent to the square root. So one over three to the one half power is equivalent to one over the square root of three, okay? But we can't leave it like this, right? We gotta rationalize the denominator. So I would multiply top and bottom by the square root of three. And that's gonna give me one times square root of three is just the square root of three. Square root of three times square root of three is just three. So three to the negative one half power is square root of three over three. And like I said, you are not gonna have to do that today. That was only on the example problem. Okay, so there you go. So then it says, now that we did all that, can you graph it? And that's the easy part. So we've got zero, one, one, three, and two, nine. This is kind of an approximation. On the other side, negative two, negative one, nine, and negative three, negative one, 27. And we get something that kind of looks, 
kind of looks like that. If you want a prettier graph, you can go to go to your Desmos and you just type in y equals three to the x and you get something that will be similar to that. I don't want to talk too much about how the graphs look. I would rather you graph them out and see what happens on your different examples. So really focusing on, on the, the base number here. And then the last couple of problems that you see, what is different when say we have like two times two to the X. So what does this number do to our graph? And what does, what does this coefficient in front of our power do to the graph? Right? So fill out there, fill out the tables for your grade and then go to, go to Desmos, graph them out, see what the graphs look like, and try to identify what patterns you can, because tomorrow we'll be looking at more, more examples of exponential functions. And if you recognize what these simpler cases are, it will hopefully make the work tomorrow a bit easier. All right, that's all. Bye. Oops, where's the button?